You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. All right, Black and White Sports supporters, we're going to talk about, once again, same thing we talked about earlier. We're going to talk about the Buccaneers and we're going to talk about the Browns slash Patriots. Patriots hired Alex Van Pelt. As their offensive coordinator, I think it's a great hire. Veteran guy, longtime quarterbacks coach, kind of known as a quarterback guru. And uh, there was real shock that came out of Cleveland when he got let go, when he got fired. By the way, I said earlier in the video, and I said in the past, I felt like that was a very Jimmy Haslam move and not a move that came from Kevin Stefanski. Well... As I was looking around at reaction to the Van Pelt hire in Patriots land, I came across Albert Breer, one of the best NFL insiders that there is. And he dropped a bit of a bombshell, and I don't know if he understands what he dropped in this, but it seems, and I've talked about this before, I think Deshaun Watson is going to get everybody fired. Okay? I think he's going to get everybody in Cleveland fired. I think Stefanski's a hell of a coach. The job he did uh, when he won Coach of the Year, the job he did this year after losing Nick Chubb, going through four quarterbacks to make it into the playoffs, Joe Flacco, I just think Stefanski and his staff, Alex Van Pelt included, who's no longer there, along with other guys that was on that staff, I just think they were a fantastic offensive group. I mean, if Stefanski gets fired tomorrow, he, he'll get another job pretty damn quick. Well, Burt Breer, Albert Breer of the MMQB and NBC Sports Boston talked about the situation with Van Pelt getting fired in Cleveland. And he dropped something in here that go, made, I mean, set off alarm alarms. And I pointed at it and went, there you go. Alex Van Pelt is the first casualty of the fact that I don't think Deshaun Watson's very good anymore. And Jimmy Haslam seems to be the one that made this call. And a younger play caller. Alex Van Pelt makes sense because he has been a play caller before and he can be a resource to your new head coach. And I think there's another element to this that's really important too. And I I don't think that this should be lost in the whole thing. You know, when you talk to people in Cleveland, they feel like Kevin Stefanski wasn't the one who fired Alex Van Pelt. They feel like the Haslams and Paul D. Podesta were the ones that did it because they didn't feel like they were getting enough out of Deshaun Watson. And I know the reaction on that Brown staff. They were shocked and they're a little worried right now. And the reason why is because Kevin, if you've been around him, is a little bit more of a flatline personality. Alex Van Pelt was the glue guy on that staff, the guy who was outgoing, the guy who got brought people together, the guy who was kind of the veteran. Okay, I'll just stop it right there. But you heard there was shock, and they're worried with the Browns right now for Alex Van Pelt no longer being there because Stefanski and him, as, as a unit, made up the offense, and their personalities worked well together. And you heard... Being able to get whatever they need, it might have been a Deshaun Watson situation. Getting the most out of Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson just got Alex Van Pelt fired. It's surely what that sounds like. Because that firing, if it, it what's going to happen? They, they, got, they got Watson. All right. He's not going to be able to perform up to former Houston Texans standards. You know, regardless of all the the crap he did off the field, my issue always was, how are you going to come back and be so productive after missing nearly two full seasons as NFL quarterback? I'm sorry, Deshaun Watson didn't look very good last year. All right? He hasn't looked very good last year. Joe Flacco clearly looked better, and he came off his couch from home say that out loud and tell me you got your quarterback in cleveland right now so if i'm kevin stefanski i'm worried about my job 
going forward. I'm extremely worried about it because my job is tied to Deshaun Watson. All right? So, anyway, wow. At the first casualty involving Deshaun Watson was Alex Van Pelt. Unbelievable. I think they got rid of a good guy. I think the Patriots won. I still think the Buccaneers should have been all over him. Liam Cohen, they got their guy. Right, but this really does seem to make the re-signing of Baker Mayfield more likely for the Bucs. And if you're Todd Bowles and you're Tampa Bay and you took, you know, they did a lot of great things this year with a not great roster and a lot of dead money. This was supposed to be a reset year. So if they want to run it back with basically what they did, but with a little bit better players and a little bit more money spent, great way to start. Liam Cohen is a bright young coordinator. Did it with the Rams. I think it's fair to say probably maybe wasn't the most experienced at the time. So did it, went back to college, now comes back to the NFL with more experience under his belt. Having done it, this is a really strong move for the Bucs, especially it pertains to their quarterback. Okay, so they got him because he was on the Rams staff when Baker went to the Rams and got in that offense. This is the same offense that Dave Canales ran, okay? And Baker has already reacted to this. All right? He's already reacted. Baker Mayfield on the Bucks, planning to hire Kentucky and former Rams offensive coordinator Liam Cohen says there will be similarities to Dave Canales' offense. This is Rick Stroud. All the guys they interviewed, all the names that I saw, a lot of good options. Really? It's kind of hard to understand how that thought process goes, but obviously um, got to work with Liam in L.A., great guy. Uh, really, really great guy. So if, if they lock that down for sure, it's similar system. Obviously, the same system, just some different terminology and, and how he wants to call things. But, um, yeah, and that there's something to say about that. We've talked to him in the offense for the skill guys, uh, the offensive line. You know, so it's important to have. Have they reached out to you? Okay, so there's something to be said about continuity in the offense. Now, far as the no play calling thing, the one thing I would remember – and remind everybody about Van Pelt, the guy we talked about a second ago. He called that 48-7 to Pitts, uh, Cleveland win over Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh Steelers with, uh, with Baker Mayfield a few years ago uh, because Stefanski was out with COVID. So that's just something I'm throwing that out there to remind everybody on Van Pelt very quickly. But, um, again, more reaction from... Baker Mayfield, this is uh, Rock Riley, and he's at the Pro Bowl, too, and he talked to Baker. All right, so we just talked with Baker Mayfield, and again, he loves Tampa. He loves the organization. He said there has been some preliminary talks between his agent and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, This new offensive coordinator, he's very familiar with him. The system should be very similar to what they ran last year. Terminology will be a little bit different. Uh, and Tristan Wirth says he's got to do some homework on this new offensive coordinator. But all in all, Baker, he won the competition last night against C.J. Stroud. He's looking forward to playing in the flag football game. He's in a real good mood. That's the latest here inside Camping World Stadium in Orlando. At the- okay. So, again, you're keeping some similarities, and I think that's the goal, right? Because Baker came out earlier. It was what it was in my video earlier. Earlier. It is a priority for Baker Mayfield to stay in the same offense when he goes to re-sign with the Buccaneers or an offense that's the same but with some different terminology in certain places. But that's the reaction. I do think that helps re-sign Baker a lot. I still think Alex Van Pelt should have been the guy down there. I think it should have been an immediate hire. Look, he was a University of Pittsburgh quarterback. Alex Van Pelt was. Personally speaking, I might have hired him in Pittsburgh. I know they hired Arthur Smith, but, you know, I don't know. This guy's got a really good reputation around the league. Liam Cohen, young guy. You know, Baker's still pretty young. I don't know how that dynamic's going to work out. They are very familiar with each other. Uh, I believe Baker was with the Rams for five games. But the offenses are very similar to the one he was running under Dave Canales. So there's the Baker Mayfield reaction. Now, whether or not not grabbing a Van Pelt or somebody like that, 
Whether or not that's going to cost the Buccaneers a little something extra in free agency, I don't know. You know, I don't know if, if that's going to. But if I'm a Patriots fan, I'm very happy. All right, because Stefanski, what he does with his offenses and Van Pelt too, they look at the quarterback they got and then they take their offense and they start scheming around the skill set of that quarterback. I think that's the way it should be done. Again, if I'm a Browns fan, shit, I'm worried. Because <laughs> I think you got a really good coach, but I think Deshaun Watson's going to end up getting everybody run off. You know, all it's going to take, all it's going to take is 7-10 and 10 next year, and Stefanski's gone. And it wouldn't shock me if he's gone and rehired in the same cycle. You know, part of Belichick and Pete Carroll's issues was age and defensive co uh, coaches, all right? That combination, right? And whatever power they wanted. So, being an offensive guy, shit. Stefanski could get fired, he'll get rehired almost immediately. I mean, you know. Tell me what you think. Peace, I'm out. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.